Hello, this is Eric with BC Gurus, and this is part six of Web Apps. And this video is going to cover uh, the Google Maps integration that comes with BC that will allow you to um, work with maps and web app items. And when it comes to this, there's basically three options you have for working with uh, mapping data. And uh, the first one is just you can show a list of your items on a map. So in the last video, we showed you how to output a list of items, and you can do that based on categories things like that. Uh, you may optionally want to display those items and their locations on a map and so you can integrate with Google Maps to do that. Um, related to that is the proximity search and so imagine your retail store chain and you've got a bunch of different uh, retail locations. Oftentimes you want to provide a store locator type of functionality and um, you can do that by uh, setting up the mapping data so that the web app knows where the item is and so when people search for a location based on a uh, postal code you can show close uh, closely related options and actually include those on a map now when it comes to proximity search uh, you can choose to display the options or the res search results on a map or just display a list of those search results uh, you can do either or or both um, and then also also, there are some options for just generating raw location data. So if you're familiar with the uh, Google Maps JavaScript API and uh, you want to create a custom uh, a custom mapping integration and at some point you're probably going to need the latitude and longitude for those items and there are tags you can use to get that and uh, create those API objects needed to make that function correctly. Uh, we won't go into detail on that third one. I'll, I'll point out where you can get the information um, but that uh, that goes into some deep JavaScript stuff and uh, so we're, we'll cover getting the data. Um, there are some settings you have to go through in order for any of this to work. Uh, we'll cover those in just a minute here, how you get that set up. And uh, once you do have that set up, some additional fields will become available so you can input the address and things like that. And uh, so we'll go through that. Uh, finally, once you have all your uh, items configured and some mapping data associated with each one. Uh, we'll talk about uh, your options for actually getting that uh, out onto a page and that's going to cover the module tags necessary uh, to do that and uh, you can kind of see a preview of what that's uh, going to look like over here. Okay, so we're going to uh, create a retail stores web app, which will contain um, a listing of our retail store locations. And uh, we're just on the step one, the details page. And uh, you can do this when you're first creating the web app, or uh, you can do it after the fact, even if you already have items created. Um, you'll just have to go back and add all the corresponding data to each item. But in order for any of the mapping options to uh, come into effect and enable themselves, I guess, you're going to need to scroll down to the bottom and put a check next to this allow proximity search box. Now, even though this says uh, proximity search, uh, that's not just about searching. If, if you're going to do any kind of mapping options at all, you're going to need to enable this box. And then you're also going to need to come down and check the countries you want to uh, uh, enable this for. So our uh, our our store locations are all in the United States, so we'll just have a box there. And this box is checked by default, uh, basically, uh, when you create the site in your partner portal and specify uh, those options, it's going to at least uh, check this for you based on the country you selected. So that's, uh, that's all we need to do to get the actual web app uh, created. And uh, once we have that, we can actually go into the items themselves and specify their addresses. So we're on the uh, create slash edit item page. And uh, so what we're going to do, we're going to create an item. We'll call this one item two. And because we enabled the proximity search, we have this extra section uh, in between details and more options. And that's just the item address. These are not custom fields. Uh, these are built in. Uh, it's the street address, city, state, and postal code, uh, and then the country as well. Um, these built 
in fields only show up if you have the proximity search option enabled. So if you're not seeing them, you'll need to go back to that previous step and enable proximity search. And uh, you can get there by uh, clicking on the settings cog uh, next to the web app in question, and it'll take you back to that screen. So uh, we can just fill in the address and uh, click save. And uh, once you've done that, it's going to create uh, the item. Uh, we can see that down here if we go to the retail stores and edit item two. It should have uh, saved those fields for us, and you can see them in here as well. Now, uh, the simplest thing to do here would be to now display this item or a list of items on the map. So I'm going to go ahead and create a couple more items and then uh, we'll jump over and I'll show you how to set that module up. So we've uh, created a couple items and populated their addresses and now it's time to get those items uh, to show up on the map itself. And so for that you're just going to come to your page or your template or wherever you're going to include this map and you're going to open up the module manager under the web app section. And there's two options or two modules related to showing items on a map. The first one is displaying a list of web app items on a map and the other one is the same thing except it's going to uh, determine what items to display based on the search results and uh, they're both going to have a similar effect they're going to show a map with different items on it uh, in the first case you'll configure exactly what items you want and in the second case it's just going to be the items that happen to correspond with the search results um, we'll cover uh, the search and all that in the next video which is all about search um, but for now we'll just do the displaying the list of items on a map so um, similar to the other list web apps uh, modules, you're going to need to first select which item we're talking about. So in this case, we're going to display items from the retail stores web app. And then we have uh, the same basic criteria. Uh, you can limit this by category or uh, just display all items and things like that. So we're going to display all the items in this one to keep it simple. And uh, then uh, same type of thing, uh, you're going to have these extra customized options. And uh, in this case, what you're going to need to do is specify how wide and how tall your actual map is going to be. So this is going to be 400 pixels wide by 400 pixels tall. Um, the Google key is your Maps API key. And uh, for some uses of the Google map system, you'll have to basically create an agreement with Google and get a special API key. And uh, what you do is you just paste that in here. Now, we won't go into the details of that. You can go to the Google Maps API documentation and uh, there's this article uh, obtaining an IP. API key. It talks about what they are when you use them and then it gives you the instructions on how to obtain one. And most of the time you will want to go through this process. Um, you'll want to set up a Google account specifically for your customer, not for you, uh, but do this for your customer or use their existing one. Generate that API key. It'll look something kind of like this. If you can uh, see that we can probably zoom in here and get a closer view. And uh, you'll copy that out and you will paste that into here. And that's going to enable um, uh, more usage of the map system. Uh, it'll change your limits and it'll track based on the customer. Um, for this very basic example, we can get by with leaving this Google key blank, but normally you'd want to paste that in there. But once you do that, it's going to insert this module and uh, set up all the uh, options for creating the map how you want it. And then we'll go ahead and click update. And once we do that, we can preview this page and uh, you can see it's generated my Google map. Um, it's put a location for each item on the page. And uh, these two items are uh, pretty close to each other. You can zoom in here, uh, move the map around. When you click on one of the markers, uh, you're going to see the description, the name, and uh, the actual address of this item. Uh, you can do the same thing here. So uh, real basic and easy way to get Google Maps on the page, and uh, it can come in quite handy. Uh, so the built-in functionality is quite useful, but from time to time uh, you may need to do something a little bit more custom uh, with your mapping solution. Uh, in fact, you may not even want to use uh, Google Maps at all, uh, another mapping framework, or you may want to have a little bit more control over the output. And 
BC can help you a little bit with that. Um, they have some specific tags that will allow you to get some more raw data. For instance, I've customized my list template to output the latitude and longitude of the item, and that'll be determined based on the address that I specified on the item. And uh, by outputting these tags, um, in this case, you're just going to see a basic output where it actually outputs the latitude and longitude. More often than not, you would um, this would be as part of some JavaScript code that you would output for each item, and you can use that to generate your uh, Google Latlong objects for use with the uh, Google Maps API. Um, if you're going to do that, you're going to need to take a look at the Google uh, JavaScript API reference to see how that works. If you're not familiar with JavaScript, it can be a little intimidating, um, but you do at least have those options um, to output th that type of raw data. Um, in addition to that, there are some other tags you can use. For instance, the address line one and two, uh, city, country. These will just output um, those uh, values based on what you fill in for the address field. So again, if you've enabled proximity search in the web app settings, you have the option of also using uh, those tags as well. And uh, pretty straightforward to get on the template. You just need to uh, add them there. And uh, you can use those both in the details page as well as the list templates themselves. So finally, I wanted to show you uh, one more option you have when it comes to uh, location things, and this kind of falls within uh, the realm of mapping. Um, say you want to do a store locator. In this case, uh, this is a site that keeps uh, a database of different places that offer various vaccines in the state of Colorado. And uh, what you're looking at here is a web app item uh, search form. Uh, but because we have the proximity stuff added as part of this web app. Uh, in addition to, be able, to being able to search on uh, custom fields, uh, such as the type of vaccine, we also can search uh, city uh, and as well as zip code. And uh, so I can put in a zip code here and say I want the items uh, within a certain distance and then click the search option. And it's going to show me a list of clinics that uh, are within that radius that, uh, in, in this case, any, but you can limit it to say a 20 mile radius and get a slightly uh, narrower set of results. And then it just shows uh, the search results, which is a list of items. And um, in this case, we're not actually outputting the results on a map, but by using the web app item results tag, you could have alternatively or in addition to uh, included those items on the map as well as just the list view. But again, this is based off proximity search with the postal code. And so it kind of, uh, you need to enable the same options. And then it's just a matter of putting the appropriate web app uh, search results tag on the page.